So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about my Fallout 5 backup plan. I should probably start off this video by telling you what exactly I mean by my Fallout 5 backup plan. Well, more or less, at Bethesda's E3 conference in 2017, I found myself immensely disappointed. There's a lot of rumors and a lot of anticipation of something great coming from Bethesda Game Studios, the creators behind Fallout 4 and the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, along with all the other Fallout and Elder Scrolls games. And what did we actually get? Well, we got Creation Club. Obviously, that was a massive disappointment for many of us. Some people still are very against that system as a whole. And although I think it's way more likely for us to get a new game announcement at this E3, I don't necessarily want to get excited for this. There's two main reasons for this. Obviously last year I was immensely disappointed and I just don't want to have that same feeling again. But in addition to that, there's actually a lot of things in Creation Club that have been teased that I know personally are being worked on and are super high quality that haven't been released yet for any reason. And going up into E3, that kind of makes me wary that something fishy is going on. I just don't want to get too excited. I don't know what that could be. It's just, you know, my gut feeling telling me don't get super excited this time. So my backup plan is actually three games that I'm going to tell you guys about today that I think you should be excited for if Bethesda doesn't really announce anything super exciting. Again, I actually think it's pretty likely that they're going to announce a new AAA RPG at this E3. I personally believe it's going to be a brand new IP, but not Starfield. Maybe it'll be a Fallout 5, but I also think that's extremely unlikely. And who knows, maybe it could even be the Elder Scrolls 6. But as I said, they're not working on that, but it wouldn't be the first time a major game company has lied. And honestly, I think it would be pretty amazing if they managed to hide that this whole time. Before we get into the first game though, I actually do want to just announce this little shirt I made. It is up right now on my website. You can actually get it for 10% off. I try to keep it pretty simple with this shirt. I feel like you could wear this without anyone actually knowing it's a Fallout 4 shirt, which is something I personally like. You can find a link to it down below, but if you guys are interested in purchasing it, you can use the coupon code SKYLINE while you're actually checking out to get 10% off up until midnight tonight. So either way, what are these games that I'm so hyped for, or at least hyped for the announcement of? Well, the first is actually going to be Cyberpunk 2077. This is a new and up and coming game from CD Projekt Red, the developers behind The Witcher 3. Right off the bat, it's going to get a lot of you excited. The Witcher 3 had a lot of parallels to Fallout 4, both in its theme and style. They're both very highly acclaimed RPGs that provide with you an open world and a lot of different options and things like that. I actually didn't like The Witcher 3. I tried to get into it multiple times. It won so many awards, so many Game of the Year awards, but I just really couldn't break through the first couple of hours. I think Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be a bit different here. They've mentioned now a few times that it's actually going to have a more in-depth character customization system and just all around it seems like it's going to have a more open world vibe. It's going to be more similar to a Fallout or Elder Scrolls in that regard where you can kind of craft your character as to how you want it to be and then go explore that world and make your own decisions unlike the system that was actually in The Witcher 3. In addition the setting's pretty cool if you don't know it's going to take place in 2077 but in a kind of typical future so hypothetically about 50 years ahead of the technology that we have right now but even though technology has continued to progress society has degenerated so now you do have an overarching government that's quite bad it's actually taking place in this location called night city and there's a lot of stuff you could read up about it that makes it sound very interesting and very exciting and actually we recently got a tease that makes it seem very likely that this is going to be announced at this coming e3 it kind of seems a little bit sensationalist when you talk about it but when you actually look at the evidence more or less at one of their recent financial presentations when the CEO was asked about Cyberpunk 2077 and when it would be getting released or an announcement, this little glitch popped up on screen. Maciej uh, from Bloomberg News. When can we expect uh, the uh, second beep from Cyberpunk? Uh, well, as regards cyberpunk, I would terribly want to tell you something about this, but today this is not the time. So if you actually look at some of the freeze frames, there's three E's in there. And again, that's the kind of part where it seems really fishy. But if you actually look at the logo in the bottom left portion of the screen, the logo doesn't change. If this was a true glitch and there was an AV error, that logo would be glitching out also. But the CD Projekt Red logo maintains its composure completely throughout that. Whether you believe it or not, I mean, it would be crazy timing for that glitch to appear on screen with three E's like that when asked that question and the logo to all stay perfectly in composure. It just seems to me that it's very likely we're going to get some new information about Cyberpunk 2077 at this E3. Many of CD Projekt Red games typically come out in March, so I think that could be a pretty likely release date, maybe early next year. 
But either way, I'm just happy and excited to see more about this game and actually potentially get some in-game screenshots or gameplay from it. Out of the list, that's probably the game that's most similar to Fallout 5, but also as a backup plan, something that's more definitive that I think Fallout fans will enjoy is Metro Exodus. We've seen a ton about this game and have the most information and details about this one when compared to any of the other ones. If you don't know, Metro Exodus is going to be the third iteration in the Metro franchise, the first one being Metro 2033, then Metro Last Light. It has a pretty different vibe than Fallout. It's not really open world. It's more linear with a pretty standard story progression that is actually based off a bunch of books. So there's not a ton of room for choices or options. It's just the game itself looks so freaking good. It takes place in a post-apocalyptic setting, very similar to Fallout and even Cyberpunk 2077 to some extent. And for that reason, I'm very excited about it. I just think a lot of the gameplay and the trailers that we have seen do look amazing. And I know a lot of you guys watching have even commented in the past that you kind of wish I covered some Metro stuff. A lot of pieces of Metro equipment is actually modded into Fallout 4, so there's definitely an overlap in those audiences, and I think this game is going to be a great backup plan if there's no Fallout 5. The real piece of information we're waiting for is, right now it seems like Metro Exodus is supposed to come out in 2018, we have no definitive release date though. A lot of the other Metro games also came out in the early year, so like January, February, March, so this will be an unusual release date for them, and hopefully we'll actually see a November release and we can actually get into it towards the end of the year, the holiday season. Alright, so this last one is definitely going to be like the loosest tied, probably the most likely one not to get announced here, but maybe it will, and I'm saying pretty hopeful that it will get announced or we'll get more details about it. And that's going to be Obsidian Entertainment's new RPG. So we know a few things about this. It's actually their biggest game yet. They announced that in a Eurogamer tour of their offices that their upcoming game is the biggest project they've ever worked on. Which is pretty exciting, you have to imagine the previous ones was either one of the Knights of the Old Republic game or Fallout New Vegas. So either way, this game is hypothetically going to be bigger than Fallout New Vegas. And although we literally know nothing about the content of this game, I don't even think we know if it's technically an RPG, a lot of the other comments Obsidian has made about this is, is they're going back and making a game that they're known for, the thing people like to see from them which points very highly towards an open world RPG. Again, that's pretty much speculation. They never came out and said, hey, we're making an open world RPG. But they did say in a podcast that they are actually replaying through Fallout New Vegas in preparation for working on this new game. So I think it's pretty likely that we're seeing something like that from Obsidian. Obviously, if you don't know, Obsidian Entertainment are the developers behind Fallout New Vegas, what a lot of people feel is the best Fallout game ever made. The one other piece of information we do have is this one's actually being published by Private Label, that's a subsidiary of Take-Two. And for better or for worse, apparently from some of their financial records, this game isn't going to be released in 2018, but potentially in early 2019. Again, that's not confirmed, we don't know any of that for a fact, things can change. But it seems pretty likely that the earliest this game will be released to the public is at least early next year or later. I personally hope we get an announcement of it or maybe a teaser showing actually what the game's going to be, what the setting, hopefully confirming it's an open world RPG. I think that would be amazing and a lot of people would really enjoy that. But yeah, really, those are the three games for my Fallout 4 backup plan. But before we end, as always, I'm going to give you guys a psych fun fact of the day, something I do in pretty much all of my videos now. So today we're actually going to do something that's more like neuroscience based but still neuroscience and psychology very closely tied. More or less, it's gonna be about different types of aphasia. Aphasia is the inability to communicate properly, either that being processing what other people are saying or actually saying things yourself. There's a bunch of different types about this. One of them is like the obvious, you can't speak or you can't understand other people. That's super scary. It's like kind of like you're locked in a box in your own head. There's other types though that even your internal monologue, like that little voice that goes through your head, can't be processed by your brain because that technically is understanding language and understanding communication. But the real scary one, the real scary variant of this disease that I recently learned about was, there's one type where you will be able to communicate finally, so I can speak like I do right now, but you will not be able to understand anything anybody else is saying. So your brain can't process incoming communications, but you can do outbound communications fine. That seems terrifying. Imagine being able to talk and kind of look at the world the same way, but you can't understand anything anybody is saying. The reason for this is different parts of your brain actually do these different things. So one module in your brain actually does the speech processing, while another module actually does the speech creation and actually forming words and things like that. But either way, I can only imagine how terrifying a world like that must be in, and I just wanted to share it with all of you. So yeah, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one again. As always, I thank you guys for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all next time.